Welcome back everyone, this is James, otherwise known as Twintendo, and we are continuing our debate for Ash Ketchum's strongest Pokemon. Last time our contestants Lumia's Trainer Zack and Austin of Resort Originals debated their top 3 Pokemon. Make sure to watch part 1 over on Zack's channel if you haven't already. Now we have 3 more to go to complete their team, so that's what we're going over in this video. But if you need a quick explanation, our two contestants have drafted Ash's Pokemon up until they have an entire team. They are also debating why their team is better by explaining their roster choices. Each contestant gets an opening statement and are allowed one rebuttal to prove their point. So Austin, you're up first with your fourth round pick. Heracross is a Pokemon that is definitely having a good argument for being the strongest in Ash Ketchum's Johto region team. Since it's the strongest there, it definitely has the potential to be able to be on Ash's strongest team of all time, so I think putting him on my team is a perfect spot for it. Heracross has always had a fun personality while on Ash's team by always sucking sap out of Bulbasaur's bulk, but don't mistake that for weakness. Its first signature win was against a powerful Caesar with a data analytics trainer that could be considered a top tier VGC trainer if we give any real world correlation to it. The great thing about Heracross is its raw talent. It never really had a lot of battles throughout the region, but it was used sparingly when Ash needed a powerful Pokemon. In the Silver Conference, Heracross got its first taste of the Pokemon League competition by facing off against Gary's Magmar and overcame the type advantage to pull out the victory. The next league it was featured in was in the Lily of the Valley Conference in the Sinnoh region where Heracross won its first match against Krigatoon. It tried those moves with its next matchup of Darkrai, but it wasn't able to overcome the sheer power of the legendary Pokemon. So if it takes a legendary Pokemon to knock Heracross out, it definitely has a spot to being one of Ash's strongest Pokemon. Alright, this next choice is all about pure power. It's Ash's Snorlax. This Pokemon makes a team because of how bulky and strong it is. After sleeping through most of the Orange Island Saga, Snorlax actually proved to be quite the powerhouse by becoming handy in the Johto League, Battle Frontier, and even Sinnoh League. Speaking of the Battle Frontier, this is where we get Snorlax's greatest feat. No, not that he used 6 moves in battle cause that was before the anime went the 4 move limit route like in the games. I'm actually talking about the fact that it went against Greta's Hariyama and Metacham and won. Two fighting types that it's supposed to be weak against and this Pokemon took care of both of them. That just shows how much of a powerhouse Snorlax is. This Pokemon is not one to be messed with. Snorlax may be powerful, but it is only one food basket away from a deep slumber. If this battle takes place in the Gala region, I'll make sure there is a vendor nearby cooking up some curry to distract Snorlax while Heracross is taking a 2 times effective close combat right to its face. You seem to be forgetting the fact that if you get in the way of Snorlax's sleeping or even his eating, he's gonna get pissed off and he's gonna attack. Yeah, he fell asleep when Ash needed him during the Orange League, but every time after that, he failed to disappoint. And yeah, Heracross fails to disappoint as well, but we're talking about a Snorlax that can take out its weaknesses. All I gotta say is I do not want to be the one getting in between Snorlax and its food. Let's go to round 5 starting with Zack. Fifth team member I have is Ash's Naganadel. The reason it makes a team is because 1. It's a freaking Ultra Beast and 2. Because of its Dragon and Poison typing. This type combo comes with a whole bunch of resistances that'll definitely help out Ash's team a bit. Let's run through them shall we? Naganadel resists Fighting, Poison, Bug, Fire, Water, Grass, and Electric so it can take hits from a lot. As for its weaknesses, it's already taken care of by other members I mentioned before like Greninja for Ground and Psychic, Infernape and Pikachu for Ice, and even Snorlax's Ice Punch for Dragon, although Naganado can also take care of that itself. This Pokemon is also a decent battler, with it being able to go toe to toe with Tapu Koko for a bit and even taking out Kakui's Lucario, a Pokemon that Ash doesn't have the best track record with. So Naganadel is a solid choice. The moment I knew Gliscor was going to be an incredibly strong Pokemon was the episode where we encountered McCann, who is known as the Air Battle Master and owns a very powerful Caesar. Now Gliscor initially lost, but Ash challenged Caesar to a rematch. During the battle, Gliscor learned Giga Impact and although it improved overnight, it did lose again. But then Ash decided to leave Gliscor with the Air Battle Master for further training to allow it to be stronger than it ever could have if it stayed with Ash. This was even more significant because McCann always had refused to train any other Pokemon, but he saw something in Gliscor to allow it to stay with him and train. It was finally showtime for Gliscor when Ash went against Paul in the Snow League tournament. It ended up battling three of Paul's Pokemon, where it was withdrawn against Ninjask, defeated Drapion, and then lost to Electivire. 
It was a Pokemon that was fairly weak when it was a Gligar, but it really grew into its own as a Gliscor, with moves like Stone Edge, Giga Impact, X Scissors, Steel Wing, and Fire Fang, this Pokemon is a force to be reckoned with. It's important to know the journey that it took for Glyceor to get to where it is now, but it is just an absolute strong Pokemon that is incredibly bulky, as all of you probably know from VGC anyways. Now let's not forget that it also brings a new dynamic to my team with the ground and flying typing to really round out my team. Glyscore might have gotten training from the Air Battle Master, but it's got nothing on Aganadel. Have you seen how fast it was moving in the air against Tapu Koko? This Pokemon is a legit natural. What about Glyscore? It doesn't even really fly, it just glides. Yeah, have fun staying in the air when there's no wind, buddy. Now, Zach, I would not worry about my Glyscore because you've got your own problems with Nanagadal. Nanagadal has almost zero battling experience, so there really isn't anything to rely on when it comes to a full 6 on 6 strongest Ash Ketchum Pokemon battle. It was nice to see Ash Ketchum Ultra Beast, but this Pokemon is nowhere near its potential. It rarely even battled at all. This is a good pick on paper with its moves, typing, and being an Ultra Beast, but until this Pokemon gets any training at all, it's only as good as Ash's Noviarn or worse. All right, you two, these are your final picks. Make your statements count. Austin, go ahead. Ash's Star Raptor is known for being incredibly fast. And actually, that's how it evolved into Star Raptor. It continues to do races at Oak's lab with Ash's Swellow, so it continued its training even after its time with Ash. This is also a great type to round out my team. Getting off a priority Brave Bird or close combat is more than capable to do serious damage against any Pokemon. However, I do have to do a quick shout out to Incineroar. It is a fantastic Pokemon, but just didn't really feel like there was a spot for it on my team. So shout out to Alola. Now I wanted my last team member to be Sceptile, but since you took it, Austin, I'm going to have to go with the god himself, Rowlet. If you take a good look at my current team, you'll notice that Ash has a pretty big ground weakness. And as powerful as Greninja is, we can't put it all on him. So that's where Rowlet's grass typing will really come in handy. Not just that, but its flying typing also leaves it immune to the team's big bad ground weakness, so we're all in good shape now. As for its weaknesses, they're all covered by the rest of the team, so it's all good. Close Combat, Brave Bird, Aerial Ace, Wing Attack. Plus... Probably a max speed with a jolly nature is more, more than enough to be able to take out your sleep little owl. You could dress your Rowlet up in an Arceus costume and it still has nothing on my Star Raptor. Are you sure about that? Because you seem to be overlooking the fact that this unevolved starter not only took out Ryuki's Dragon types, How's the Sejuai, but also even Kukui's Braviary, a bird Pokemon that's way better than Star Raptor. Rowlet might be a sleeper, but if you keep sleeping on the boy, Star Raptor might just be its next victim. Now contestants, you get one final statement to allow the viewers to choose who they think have a stronger team. Zach, let's hear your statement. For your team that consists of Greninja, Infernape, Pikachu, Snorlax, Nagandel, and Rowlet. The team I chose is made up of Ash's most special Pokemon. They all have amazing type coverage and even cover each other's weaknesses. And that actually doesn't even matter much because a lot of these Pokemon are good even at a disadvantage. These are some above average Pokemon, so I know they won't disappoint. And what makes these guys even more important besides their impressive strengths and special abilities is the fact that these group of Pokemon all have really strong bonds with Ash, which is probably the most important factor you want to have for his best team. Now Austin, your final statement for your team of Charizard, Sceptile, Lycanroc, Heracross, Glasgow and Staraptor. Overall, I base my team on pure strength, but also their personality of their sheer determination to win, no matter the circumstance. I truly value my Pokemon's perseverance and fighting spirit. I also vary the types to be prepared to cover their weaknesses, while also considering their wide range of move pool to really take advantage of the Pokemon I have chosen. My Pokemon also don't fall asleep in battle. Well, if you don't, use hypnosis or if they listen to you but we're past that well there you have it folks now it's all up to you to decide who's won click the poll on the top right to let us know who you think has the better team also tell us why in the comment section below do you think zach has a better team use the hashtag zach got the dub if you think austin has a better team use the hashtag resort originals for the win and if you thought I was a good host, use hashtag TwinTendo to host. Thank you for all being a part of this video, and big thanks to Austin and Zach 
for inviting me to be the host of this show. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to all of our channels, which you can find in the description below. See you all in the next one. Ash Ketchum, sign us out. Hey trainers, Ash Ketchum here to thank you for watching the Poke Resort. Become a Pokemon Master by subscribing to Austin's channel. Don't forget to see his other recent videos so you can watch them all. Pikachu and I have surfing lessons with Austin's Alolan Raichu. So, we'll catch you later. Ha! <laughs>